Moving on uh, to Knox's emergence, and we're blessed by, um, by this page, uh, or these designs, um, and we can date them, and this is the really fascinating thing about this, because you start to see Knox emerge as a, as a great designer, I think, around this time. And we have all three of these pieces on the stand. All three of these pieces, uh, I'll say by chance, in fact, are on the stand, and were registered uh, with the um, patent office, or the registered mark office, and now in the National Archive, on the 24th of January, 1901. So one point to make, and it's true of much of the pieces on the stand, they are Victorian. He designed them in the Victorian period, which is mind-boggling, mind at least to me, when you, th when you think how modern and crisp they are. But what, because we can date these, and these are photos that attach to the, um, to the submission, and obviously they're of made pieces, not drawings, so Knox probably designed these at least six months earlier. So he designed these in around 1900. And I think you can see his emergence. We have that incredible cup on the left, which is a little bit of a copy of Ashby, uh, certainly doffs its hat to Ashby, uh, but is certainly fantastic. The tankard is actually rather traditional in shape still. He didn't as necessarily, hadn't played with the 3D aspects of design yet, but it's covered in wonderful uh, entrelac and Celtic knots. And on the right, you have this completely mad radical tankard, um, which um, again is on the stand and a wonderful huge thing. You've got um, the shape and body of it is, is really quite, still quite traditional, but it's lifted massively lifted by the stones, the enamel, and then the handle. So that's kind of 1900, and then that's his, call it his purple patch. And so you start to see 1900, you have the covered cup. Around the same period, maybe a little later, this very angular biscuit box, inlaid uh, blister pearls in, in the, root, in the um, lid, excuse me, very subtle wing-like handles to the lid. Uh, and again, using the Celtic knot really to uh, augment the whole design, uh, but keeping it very unornamented. You have the Magnus, which perhaps doffs its hat to Charles Rennie Mackintosh a little, maybe a lot, but again, an absolutely stunning, stunning piece. You have in pewter now, not, I think, in silver, um, uh, this incredible enamel work and design of this large clock, again, on the stand. And then you have these two absolutely magnificent pieces, uh, this cigarette box, which is a blend of every design you could think of, I would say, the Japanese influences there, the Art Nouveau influences there, but... Uh, go find anything else like it in the last century, I would say. The way this, you have the sea of enamel, it's raised on feet, it's one cigarette depth, um, and really a, a remarkable thing. And then perhaps most uh, famously, at least we've used it uh, with a lot of our marketing, you have this rose bowl, which embraces very, very Celtic in, in many ways, clearly, but at the same time uh, is, is kind of very modern in the way that the, the, the bowl in particular is, is uh, uh, very straight formed. And so that's really the avant-garde Knox. But finally, I wanted to come to, as we talk about his silver, the um, Knox the modernist. And this comes back to that original quote. And what you can see is there is work by Knox. And this is perhaps what we're most trying to bring that's fresh to the party with the exhibition, um, as well as just display his wonderful work, is Knox the modernist, that he is ahead of his time. Perhaps his Art Nouveau work is of his time. This is ahead of his time. And you see these very unornamented, no, no Celtic knots, nothing, uh, very much, I think, inspired by the stones of the island. Uh, you see this incredible piece, again, probably with uh, influence by Macintosh. You see a piece which, I think in the trade, is known as the radio clock because it looks like a 1930s Art Deco radio. But it's, you know, it's 1902, uh, absolutely amazing piece. Um, you have these vases, which uh, these particular pair are early and dated 1902. They may have been designed in the Victorian period. Again, they look maybe Danish 1930s. And you have this ink, ink stand, and I'll dwell on this, because it's easy to be fooled by this ink stand, because your eye goes to the slightly traditionally coloured, perhaps, enamel centre. But if you focus on the slits, uh, there's little nicks of silver being left in on each slit, quite deliberately. Goodness knows why and what that means, but it's incredibly modern. I mean, people would do that today and get talked about as silversmiths as to why they'd, they'd left a little bit of a hook on the silver. Um, really remarkable, and maybe that's the influence of those Ogham stones I showed you, I don't know. <laughs>